Welcome everyone once again. Let's talk about media and communication. So in the digital world, kids are constantly exposed to advertising, but are they really equipped to understand it? I have invited Sophie Borman from the University of Amsterdam and Wageningen University and Research to explore the concepts of advertising literacy and uncover the, the effectiveness of pictograms, those small symbols designed to warn kids about sponsored content. So Sophie and I will discuss um, Sophie's and colleagues' research the study that investigated the impact of these pictograms on minors' advertising awareness and understanding. So the question really is here, how do we create really informed online consumers? Sophie, welcome to our episode. Thank you. <laughs> Sophie, there is an ongoing debate now um, on how to create you know, safe, transparent digital environment for minors. And I believe this is where the relevance of your study lies into. Am I right? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I think um, children are exposed to a lot of um, advertising that is a bit hidden in uh, content that they want to consume, such as uh, influencer uh, content. Um, and we know that um, or the, the idea is that children are particularly vulnerable to, to these types of hidden advertising tactics because they are they find it very difficult to recognize, especially because they have limited information processing cap cap capability and uh, advertising literacy. Mm -hmm. uh, let's follow up a bit on that. You cite, I read your article and you cite research showing that minors have limited information processing capacity, which may in consequence, limit their advertising literacy. So what was missing in the research specifically that you wanted to address? So um, we did some, some studies before um, uh, in which we tried to develop uh, different ways of, of creating transparency about influencer marketing. Um, and in one of these studies, we created different pictograms um, uh, in cooperation with children uh, and also by studying them and asking children about these pictograms. Mm -hmm. But in the end, we found that uh, we did an experiment in which we showed children uh, different influencer um, YouTube videos with these pictograms. And we found that uh, children actually uh, rarely noticed them and therefore they didn't, didn't have a lot of effect. Mm -hmm. And we wanted to uh, find out um, how can we increase the effectiveness of these types of pictograms? Because we did develop them together with these children. So um, they should be quite effective. Um, and we thought, okay, maybe we need to um, inform them and make them more familiar with these pictograms. And maybe an awareness campaign can be helpful there because if children are more, or if people are more familiar with pictograms, um, we are more likely to notice them. And, and then we, it's more likely that they have an effect. So we wanted to find out if an awareness campaign could increase the effects of these pictograms. Well, then let us know um, what did you find <laughs> and the insights of that. Yeah, so what we did is we tested two different pictograms and we created an awareness campaign uh, informing children about uh, these pictograms and what they meant and why they were used. And we incorporated them in an experiment and made children watch uh, uh, sponsored YouTube videos either with or without this um, in awareness campaign. And what we found is um, three important things. One of them is that minors were actually quite capable of distinguishing the sponsored content in the videos when we asked them uh, explicitly. Um, so they do have some level of advertising literacy here, which is something that we were very happy to see because we always think that they are very, very vulnerable, but um, if we asked them, then they were actually quite capable of understanding that there was advertising in the in the sponsored videos. And what we also found again is that um, the pictograms were hardly noticed and also had little effect on their um, conceptual and external uh, advertising literacy. So they didn't increase recognition of advertising. They didn't make the children uh, more aware of the intent, um, and they also uh, didn't make them much more critical. What we did find. Uh, we did find that one of the pictograms actually made them less critical towards the influencer uh, um, advertising, uh, which is something that we found before, um, um, that uh, usually children appreciate transparency, so they appreciate these pictograms, uh, but they don't really care about the advertising that they're informing about. And most importantly, I think we found that this awareness campaign did not necessarily 
um, lead to higher recognition of, picto of the pictogram. So it didn't increase um, uh, the um, attention to the pictogram, which ho we hope to find, um, nor did it enhance uh, advertising literacy. What we did see is that this awareness campaign could really increase the understanding of the pictogram. So uh, even though most of the children did understand in some way what the pictogram was trying to inform them about, this awareness campaign did increase this. So they were more uh, capable of understanding what this pictogram was trying to, to communicate to them. Mm -hmm. uh, let's talk about uh, practical consequences of this, either for children, for parents, for lawmakers. So I'm curious to know more about that. Yeah, so based upon our findings, we argue that the way that these pictograms are used right now, or the, the way that we try to um, communicate to children that there's advertising in videos is hardly effective because mm -hmm. um, they don't notice them. Yeah. Um, so we thought maybe an awareness campaign can help. And I think we do see that there's some potential here because it does increase, for instance, the understanding. Um, but we need to find out, this was just one exposure, right? And, and only one exposure to the pictogram. So I actually think that um, this study shows potential in uh, using such an awareness campaign and also in using these pictograms, but that it needs to be uh, repeated. And, and also this pictogram, people need to be familiar with it and, and have to see it more often to really uh, uh, use this as information, as a cue to think about what is it, if, is this video advertising or not? Um, and what we also see is because we, this is something that we find in this study, but also in previous research, is that um, these disclosures, these types of pictograms, they can be very useful, but again, they are often not noticed. So what we say is if you wanna create a safe and transparent digital environment for minors, we should definitely use these disclosures to create transparency, but we should also combine it with uh, other ways of, of informing children and, uh, and, and increasing their advertising literacy uh, and making also uh, influencers and advertisers more aware of their responsibility of, of clearly, clearly communicating what is going on and why some content is commercial and advertising and, and why others is not. Mm -hmm. And what um, would you... Uh, sorry, you were continuing? Yeah, yeah. And I also wanted to add that I think um, one very positive finding is that we uh, did actually develop a pictogram that children understood and also appreciated. So I think, again, I want to emphasize that I do really think that these types of disclosures, these pictograms do have potential here. And that's mm -hmm. uh, especially if you create them together with children, they can be very useful. Mm -hmm. Of course. And what would you recommend uh, future res research should focus on? So more practical cases uh, with children, other platforms, what are we looking at now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's many, much more to explore. Um, I think one of the key here is to find um, disclosure implementations that actually attract the attention. So mm -hmm. uh, should they be bigger, longer, uh, more, uh, more repetition? That is something that future research could could investigate. Also, using, for instance, eye tracking to uh, to see what people are looking at uh, when watching these videos. Mm -hmm. And definitely, we focused only on on YouTube videos here, and and we know that children are or uh, yeah, children spend a lot of time on TikTok as well and and other social media. So we can definitely extend it to to these types of platforms. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I think. Um, main focus here should be in improving attention to these types of transparency measures. Sure. Uh, this has been, Sophie, a, an episode very straight on point as we like it. <laughs> uh, but if you had to um, compress this conversation in one or two sentences in a punchline, what would it be? <laughs> um, I think um, what I want to, in one or two sentences, I think, um, if you want to help children understand, uh, to understand that some content might actually be commercial, we need to transparently disclose this. And I think pictograms can be a way to do this, but we definitely need to explore how, and um, and and we need to make sure that people actually notice them. All right, Sophie, thank you very much. <laughs> no problem.
Uh, for those who are watching us on YouTube, you can find all the resources, all the materials of this conversation, including the study that uh, Sophie just uh, presented at the Let's Talk About Media and Communication website. Alternatively, you can listen to this episode wherever you get your podcast. You have a newsletter. You can subscribe in our website to keep in touch with our latest episodes. And you can also follow us on Twitter at Cogitatio LTA.